Okay, so <clears throat> here's the review for physics. So there are five problems, two, three longer ones, two shorter ones. So the first uh, problem has to do with Coulomb's law and electric fields. So we did this kind of problem in class, and just because you may not have been paying attention, I'm going to go through this in detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to have three charges, and I want to find out what the the net force on one of the charges is. So let's let's say we have three charges. So we'll put one here: negative two, one at one, and one at five. And the values are negative 2 microcoulombs. This one's going to be uh, 3 microcoulombs. This one is 5 microcoulombs. And you can see the distances. So uh, let's find out the forces acting on this charge. And let's, let's give them some numbers here. 1, 2, 3. So there'll be force 1, 3. We'll call that the force due to charge 1 on charge 3. And we'll do F2, 3 is the force due to charge 2 on charge yeah, do force due to charge one on charge this is force due to charge two on charge three so we're and and now we can look at the before we actually calculate the magnitudes let's look at the directions of the char of the forces so um, because these are the same sign, I mean different signs, one's positive and one negative, the directions are going to be like that and they match up. So this one here is the force due to charge 2 on charge 3. This is the force due to charge 3 on charge 2. And they match up with pairs. So they're attractive. Now these are also different signs. So those are also attractive. So I'll write those down here. So we're going to have these two attracting each other. You know, we have force pairs. So this is the force due to charge one on charge three. This is uh, actually this is the other way around. This is the force due to charge three on charge one. This is the force due to charge one on charge three. And you can see both of these have a second subscript of three. So we're trying to figure these two out, and we're going to add them together. And notice. These are both in the negative x direction if I define left to right as positive. Now, if, if these these had been both negative, then they would have been repulsive forces. So you just have to think about like charges repel and different charges, unlike charges, attract. So what we do is we calculate the magnitude of these forces, and you do that by using Coulomb's law. So you have Coulomb's constant, which I'll give to you. And then we take the, uh, you know, the magnitude or the absolute value, same thing, of the two charges. So this is the interaction between charge 1 and charge 3. And we divide by this distance, r13 squared. So we go over here and we say, OK, what's the distance? And uh, these are all in meters. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So R13 is 7 meters. Q1, well, the magnitude of Q1 is 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the that magnitude or absolute value of Q2, Q3 in this case, is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs.
So we can plug those in, get a number F13 magnitude F13. And you know these these two vectors over to the left are going to have uh, the same magnitude, they just have opposite directions. So Coulomb's constant is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton Coulomb squared per meter squared. Actually, the other way around, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. What I'm doing is thinking here, if, the, if these are Coulombs, then those Coulombs have to cancel out with the Coulombs in the constant, and the meters in the here in the units for k have to cancel out with the meters in the denominator. So I can get the final answer, which is in Newtons. Okay, so there's k, and let's just move everything over a little bit. And you've got Q1, which is 5.0 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. So make sure you change these micro coulombs to 10 to the minus 6. 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, all divided by 7 meters squared. 8.99. E to the ninth times 5 e to the minus 6 times 2 e to the minus 6 divided by 7 squared and the numbers are reasonably small it's because because I've got distances of meters so I get 0 0.00183 and the units are Newtons because it's a force Okay, now we want to find the magnitude of the force 2, 3. So that's Coulomb's constant. I'm going to leave the units off. And so our two f charges are 3 and negative 2, but we use the positive values and in this case, the distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 meters. So let's go ahead and do, figure out what that is. 8.99 times 3 times 2 divided by 4 squared. Okay. So I get 0 0.00337 newtons. That's the magnitude for 2, 3. Now, if I wanted to make them into a vector, so if I want to make these into a vector, I'm going to, you know, the vector. 1, 3. Well, we go over to our drawing and look at these. 1, 3 is pointing to the left, so it's going to be negative. So it's negative 0 0.00183 newtons. And the vector F23 is also going to be negative. If you go to the drawing, you'll see that it's going the same direction. And most likely, in your test, you're going to have to you probably have one that's positive and one that's negative. So make sure you understand what you're doing here. So the force vector acting on charge 3 is the force due to charge 1 on charge 3 plus the force due to charge 2 on charge 3. So in this case they're both negative. 0 0.00183, that's negative. And then you also have the next one, which is negative. And 0.00183 and 0.00337. I must have put in. I uh, missed out a zero there, so three, two zeros and then the number. So what I get is negative 0.0052. Newtons. Okay. Now, 
I'm also going to ask you a question about the electric field. So the electric field is so let's what let's write the equation. So there's the relationship between the electric field vector and the force vector. So we just came up with the force vector and you divide the, the official definition is you divide by Q0 so that when you come up with the equation you have K times uh, Q whatever the charge is divided by and this is um, divided by R squared so it's still divided by R squared but you only have one charge in the, the numerator so what I would what I'm going to ask you is that one of the locations wherever I calculate wherever you calculate the force so right here the question I will ask is what is the electric field vector at in this case 3 meters at 3.0 meters so you can take this force value the force vector which uh, I've lost somewhere here must have got stuck one page ahead so let me move that back okay so from the previous step I've got this um, negative so uh, another way of doing this is if you want if you have the force vector already calculated so this is the force vector 3 rather than using the test charge you could say it's the force vector 3 divided by Q3 whatever it is and you, you use the uh, actual value whether it's plus or minus so if you had a negative force vector and you had a positive charge you have a negative electric field vector so if I let me put a little 3 there now if I had a a negative charge then are divided by negative so let's see what we have here I can forget what I had so I have a negative okay negative 2 microcoulombs so I have a negative force and then I divide by my negative charge which is negative 3 I think was it negative 2 so the charge at 3 meters is negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs and electric fields can be fairly big relative to forces so if I take point negative point zero zero five two and divide by negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6 I get 2600 and the units are Newtons per coulomb so make sure you in the calculation of the forces we use the magnitudes and then we use the vector drawing to figure out which direction we're going to go left or right depending upon whether they're attractive or repulsive for the electric field once you figured out the actual force vector with its appropriate direction you can take that force at that point three and divide by the charge at that point that you use to calculate this force and you'll come out with the right one so let's you know the magnitude we're assuming that's probably okay let's think about you know what's going on here from a qualitative standpoint with the electric field so we're what we do with the electric field is we assume that we assume that this is not here anymore okay there's no charge here we just want to figure out what the electric field is so we have a positive charge located at one unit x equals one and remember if you have positive charge the electric fields point away because the test charge is also positive so you got a positive charge and positive test charge they repel each other so if we look at point two here the electric field to the right of point two is going to be pointing away and the electric field to the left is going to be pointing away so they both point away from it because it's a positive charge likewise um, for this case they're both positive so the electric field due to this 
charge is also going to be pointing away and this one is going to be pointing away and so you see I have both of them pointing in the positive X direction so when I add these two together I should get a positive electric field and that's what I have I have a positive electric field so what I would suggest is if you might need to listen to this a few times and write down what I'm telling you because if you just write this problem down without understanding how to do it you're going to get all the signs messed up and that's that's half of the problem so since I'm being very specific about what I'm asking you to do um, I want you to take the time to figure out what's going on here okay um, then we have a voltage problem so that's that's pretty much it from chapter 15 stuff calculating forces calculating electric fields uh, we're not going to do Gauss's law we're not going to do electric field lines okay so the next one is calculating the voltage so I'm going to give you a grid like this just like we did in class and I'm going to put a point in space we'll call that point A and then we'll pick two other points here now A doesn't have a charge it's just a point in space but let's say we have charge 1 here so this is 1 and this is 2 and let's call this one negative 3 microcoulombs so this charge is negative 3 we'll say this one is plus 4 microcoulombs and the question is what is the voltage at A due to charge 1 and charge 2 question mark and what is the total voltage at A so remember the voltage is the electric potential and the electric potential which we use the unit volt to determine is equal to K times Q divided by R so R is the distance this is, this is always positive now the charge can be plus or minus depending upon what it is I've got one negative I've got one positive so and then multiplied by Coulomb's constant 8.99 times 10 to the ninth so if I say what is the voltage at A due to charge 1 you know for voltages it's not a vector it's a scalar so I can I don't have to um, worry about direction or anything like that I just need to worry about distance so the distance from from a to 1 or 1 to a is going to be the square root of the x change and the y change so in this case 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so I've got 9 squared in the x direction okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then I go 1 2 3 4 5 so it's 5 5 squared and usually these are going to be square root of something you know it's probably not going to be a nice complete square you might get lucky but in this case I have the square root of 106 81 plus 25 is 106 which I can go ahead and figure out what it is square root of 106 decimal form is 10.3 Three. Now I've got two significant figures, but I'm going to carry out one extra digit here. The distance from A to 2 is a little further. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction. So 13 squared plus 1 squared is 170. And I'm, I'm not 
simplifying these or anything like that. I'm just going to plug them to my calculator. So I get 13.0. Okay, so those are the distances. So to find the voltage at A due to charge 1, we take Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, Newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared, multiply by the charge, which is negative 3 times 10 to the minus 6 Coulombs, and then divide by R, which is 10.3 meters. Remember, voltage is a scalar. 8.99 e to the minus or to e to the positive ninth times negative 3 e to the minus 6 divided by 10.3 and I get negative 2620 and the units for this for well it's volts which is the same I mean you could you get Newton meters per coulomb Anyway, that's volts, the voltage. Make sure I got that there right. Okay, and then you can, so that's the answer, first part of the first problem. Then you have the voltage at A due to charge two. 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times positive four micro 10 to the minus six Coulombs divided by the distance, which is 13 meters. So the voltage at A due to charge 2 is positive 2,770 volts. So the, the voltage at A is the voltage at A due to charge 1 plus the voltage at A due to charge 2. So it's negative 2,620 volts plus 2,770 volts and I get 148 volts which I'm since two significant figures I'm going to round off to 150 volts. So you see that this negative charge is a little smaller than the positive charge, but it's also a little closer. And that's why this number came out to be close to, to zero, relatively speaking. Okay, so that's, that's the voltage problem, just like we did in class. Okay, the next problem is a capacitor problem. It's, it's taking a series of uh, capacitors, group of capacitors here, so of course it's not going to be this exact one, but you just have to know the procedure. Okay, they'll come down round to a battery. It's the positive side, negative side. And let's say this is uh, 2.0. And we'll just do farads. That's, we know that's a huge number, but um, it just makes the math a little easier. These are 1.0, and this is um, well. Let's let's make them not 1.0. Say it's uh, 2.0. Okay, so we got one that's one, one that's two, and down here we've got uh, let's say five farads, and the voltage is five volts. Okay, but a little loose with 
significant figures there, so let me make sure everything has two significant figures. So what we're going to do first is we are going to take these two series capacitors and we're going to break that into a single capacitor. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this whole thing first rather than redraw the whole shoot and match. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two series capacitors and we're going to replace them with a single capacitor. So what's the equivalent capacitance of those two? Call that C equivalent A. So the for parallel capacitors, the equivalent capacitance is determined in the following manner. You take the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance and you take the reciprocal of the individual capacitances and add those together. So in our case, we have 1 over 1, 1 over 1 farad plus 1 over 2 farads. And that's going to be 1 plus a half, which is 3 halves. So 1 over, and this is where people make their mistake, is they think this is the equivalent capacitance, but that's not the case. You have to take the reciprocal. So the equivalent capacitance is 2 thirds farads. So that's this one, two-thirds farads. Okay. So now we can replace this one with two-thirds. So let's let's draw that sub bit here. So you got you got uh, you got two-thirds farad for the top one. You've got the next one down, which by itself, so that's four farads. You got another one down, which is five farads. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with just one equivalent capacitance. We'll call that equivalent capacitance B. And so we'd be able to replace these three with one. Well, when you have them in parallel, the equivalent capacitance is just the sum of the capacitances. So we have two thirds plus four plus five, which is nine, nine and a third, nine and two thirds, which let's just make that an improper fraction. So you're going to have three times nine is 27 plus two is 29. So you get 29 thirds farads. So that's that. This one is fine. Um, we can replace these two. We just add them together. So that's five farads. Parallel capacitors you add together. So as a consequence, this original circuit now can be simplified down to three capacitors to a single attached to a single battery. The battery is 5 volts. So this one, these two parallel comes out to be 5 farads. The middle one is just by itself anyway, so that's 4 farads. And the third one is 29 thirds farads. So now we have one more step. We want to replace those three with just one single cap equivalent capacitance. So we'll call this equivalent capacitance C. And these are in series. So again, when capacitors in series, you use the following form. So that's what we're trying to find, this equivalent capacitance. So you get 1 over the equivalent capacitance is 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 29 thirds. 
so we'll we'll take the reciprocal of that thing. So you get one fifth plus one fourth plus three over twenty nine is equal to one over the equivalent capacitance. So we have to find a common denominator. In this case, um, probably this is a prime number, so the common denominator is probably going to be uh, whatever 29 times 20 is, you know, 29 times f 5 times 4. So it's going to be it's going to be 580. So what we need to do is convert each one of these to 580. This number 580 is 4 times 5 times 29. So here we've got fifths. So to get 580s, we multiply this 1 times these other two. So it's going to be 4 times 29. So this is going to be 116. If you take 116 divided by 580, you should get one fifth, which is 0.2, which is where it works out as. Okay, the next one you take 5 times 29. 5 times 29 is 145. Again, if you take 145 divided by 580, you should get a quarter. You should get the same as this. So I do, and it, it does work out. And this one you're going to multiply by 20, because 29 times 20 is. 580, so you take 3 times 20, which is 60. Okay, so now we can add the numerators together and then see if we can simplify this thing at all. And we're still, we haven't got the final answer yet. The final answer is we could take, take the reciprocal ultimately. So 116 plus 145 plus 60 is 321 over 580. So what is that? Is there any way we can simplify that before we take the reciprocal? Well, this is divisible by 3, but this is not. Um, this is not divisible by 4 or 5. I don't think there is, but I'm going to put in my calculator just to see. So if I take 321 divided by 580 and then go to fraction. <laughs> You don't get any simplification. So that that's it. So the equivalent capacitance is 580 over 321 <coughs> farads. Okay, so that is the final total equivalent capacitance. And that's as far as you're going to have to go. 580 over 321 farads. The last thing I'm going to ask you for is what is the charge? So we know the voltage, I think it's 5 volts. Let's go back to yeah, 5 volts. So we have 5 volts. V equals 5 volts. We have the equivalent capacitance for the single capacitor is 580 divided by 321 farads. So remember, capacitance is charge per voltage. What we want is charge. So charge is equal to capacitance times voltage. Charge is equal to capacitance 580 divided by 321 times the voltage, which is 5 volts. And so in this case, you're just going to take 580 times 5. So you get 2900 divided by 321 and the units are coulombs. So make sure you notice I have all these units. I want units, so you're going to get points taken up. Now, remember in class, and I'm not going to ask you to do it for the test, but what you would do is, the next thing you would do is you take this charge and you would distribute it equally across these three capacitors and then you could use the charge and the capacitance times the voltage so you have the voltage across these three then you could take that voltage apply it across these parallel situations with 
the voltage and the capacitance, you can calculate the charge. So it's kind of like you alternate. You know, ultimately here we we use the voltage and the capacitance to get the charge. Then we use the charge and the capacitance to get the voltage. And then we use the voltage and the capacitance to get the charge. So when you go from parallel to to series to parallel to series to parallel, you kind of alternate on which um, which form of the equation for the capacitance that you use. Okay. Uh, we have another capacitance, actually two more capacitance things. So uh, we did that, you know, in, in lab. We did it in class. These RC circuits, and you know, you're not you're not going to be responsible for deriving the equations, but you are responsible for knowing what the equations are. So they are, and you have them on that handout that I gave you. The voltage across the capacitance as a function of time is equal to the applied voltage times 1 minus E to the minus 1 over RC times T. And the voltage across the resistor in an RC circuit is equal to V times E to the minus 1 over RC T. And V sub C of T plus V sub R of T equals V. So we always add these together. You should get whatever the voltage is. So let's just give you an example. So let's say, well, yeah, in class today, we, we had a certain example. So we had 5 volts. And our capacitor was 40 something, 47 microfarads. And the resistance, I think we put a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So if I asked you, what is the time constant of this circuit? Well, the time constant for an RC circuit is just R times C. So we got to make sure we convert kilo ohms to ohms, and we, and we got to convert microfarads to farads. So you get 10,000 ohms, 47 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. 10,000 times 47 e to the minus 6. And we got 0 0.47 and the units are seconds. And we know that has to be seconds. For one thing, it's called a time constant, so you think it has to have units of time. But also, if you look at the exponent, and the exponent is negative 1 over RCT, well, uh, the units for time are time. So you have 1 over RC, which has time, has units of time, times time, which has units of time, you get you get no units. And when you have something as an exponent, or as the argument of trig function, the the net units out of the whole thing have to be no units. Okay, so the time constant is 0.47 seconds. So then, what I'm going to ask you is just basically apply these equations. So if I said what is the voltage across the capacitor and resistor at 0.9 seconds, all you have to do is use the equation. So the voltage across the capacitor at 0.9 seconds is equal to 5 volts times 1 minus E to the minus 1 over RC. But I've already got RC. It's, it's 0.47 times T, which is 0.9. So this is 0 0.9. 
Now, <clears throat> if you remember in class, we said when you have when you one time constant, the time is the time constant. You're at 63% of the final voltage across the capacitor. So that's going to be around 3 volts. So we're at 0.9 seconds, which is twice as much almost. So we should be between 63 and 100%, some, something like that. Okay, 5.0 seconds times, actually 5.0 volts times 1 minus E to the minus 1 divided by 0.47 times 0.9, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and uh, I get 4.3 volts. And I'm going to give you one that's, I mean, it's not going to, again, not going to be the exact answers, but you know, it's not going to be like 4.999999 volts or 0 0.0000 volts. It's going to be something that's reasonable. Okay, so that's the voltage across the capacitor. The voltage across the resistor at 0.9 seconds is the voltage times E to the minus 1 over the time constant times the time, which is 0.9. It should be 0.7. I want you to plug it into the equation. Make sure you do this right. So I get 0 0.7 volts. And so you can see V across the capacitor plus V across the resistor equals 5 volts. Okay, and then the final problem is just calculating some uh, capacitance from the the dimensions of a capacitor. So, what is the capacitance? The capacitance is equal to epsilon zero times area divided by d. So, write down what these are. I'm not going to make you do some of it, but a is the area. D is the distance between the plates, and um, so write those down, okay? Epsilon zero is actually one over four pi k. So we've got, you've got k from a previous part of the problem. So you take one divided by the quantity four times pi and k, eight point nine nine to the ninth and you get um, should be something to the negative twelfth which it is so you get eight point eight five times ten to the minus twelfth and the units are the reciprocal of the k units because pi doesn't have units so it's going to be it's going to be um, what is it coulombs squared per newton meter squared because k was newtons meter squared or Coulomb squared. Okay, so let's say I give you it. Uh, let's say I give you some dimensions. Let's say it's a circular, circular plates, and they are 2.5 centimeters in diameter. So that means they're 1.25 centimeters in radius. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you get pi times, notice centimeters. So I need to take 1.25 divided by 100. That'll give me meters squared. So 1.25 centimeters divided by 100. That'll give me meters, which is 0 0.0125 squared times pi. So the area of each plate is 4.91 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. And let's say that the distance between the plates 
is 0 0.0001. Well, let's let's put it in millimeters. So you get a say it's 0 0.001 millimeters. I know that that's a really small number, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, the distance is 0 0.001 divided by a thousand because there are a thousand millimeters per meter. So 0 0.001 divided by 1,000 is 1.0 times 10 to the minus sixth meters. So the capacitance is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th epsilon zero times the area, which is 4.91 times 10 to the minus four meters squared divided by the distance, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus six meters and the capacitance 8.85 e to the minus 12. It's going to be a small number. e to the minus 12 times 4.91 e to the negative 4 divided by 1 e to the minus 6. And I get 4.3 times 10 to the minus 9th farads. Remember, 10 to the minus 6 is microfarad, so this is a factor of over a thousand smaller than what we've been dealing with in class. So that's how you calculate the capacitance. So then I might ask the question, uh, what is the charge on this capacitor? when it is connected to a 20 volt battery. So we've already used this relationship before. I always remember this, capacitance is charge per unit voltage. So if I want to solve for charge, it's going to be capacitance times voltage. So the amount of charge is just the capacitance, which is 4.3 times 10 to the minus 9th farads times the voltage, which is 20 volts. And I'll get 8.69 times 10 to the minus 8th coulombs. Which is a pretty small charge, but if you think about, you know, electrons, I think an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So that's the charge on an electron. Actually, it'd be negative if it's an electron. So uh, if you think about how many electrons that would be, number of electrons, all you'd have to do is take the, the total charge. Coulombs divide by the charge per coulomb. Now they don't need the negative sign in there. And I get 5.4 times 10 to the 11th electrons. So that's a pretty big number, but even so, it takes a lot of electrons to, to give you some reasonable charge. And then, uh, you know, when you have parallel plates and one plate is positively charged and one plate is negatively charged, you have the same number of electrons here as you have deficit of electrons. In an ideal electric or uh, ideal capacitor you have this electric field between the two and uh, the electric field is constant it's constant in an ideal capacitor so it doesn't matter how close you get any point in here all these different points they, they have the same electric field 
which is kind of an interesting thing to think about because you know if you think if you got right here real close to this plate you would have a really high electric field but the thing is that the the electrons that are to the left and to the right are doing an electric field left and right so the net in the direction between the plates is not that big so as you get closer these it yes the ones that are right in front of it are creating a higher electric field but you get less contribution from the ones that are next to it so um, and the electric field is just equal to the voltage between the plates which we usually know divided by the distance between the plates which we usually know so in our case we had 20 volts and our distance was 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters so you get 20 divided by 1 e to the minus 6 which is a big electric it's it's pretty high electric field it's 2 and uh, 7 zeros so that's 20 billion and the units are volts per meter or they could be um, newtons per coulomb we showed that in class I think that these these are the same units in this case the electric field between parallel plates because we're using voltage and distance volts per meter make more sense whereas newtons per coulomb made more sense when we had individual charges that we were looking at the interaction between so here's here's the thing here significant figures be careful about that I need to go back and edit my test to make sure those are all consistent units so make sure you know what the units are for all of these quantities make sure you convert centimeters and millimeters to meters microcoulombs to coulombs microfarads to farads um, those are the main ones but just you know don't just copy the number off kilo kilo ohms to, to ohms I've got one less problem on this test than last year so hopefully I last year tested them on resistors which I will for the next test but we haven't had a chance to talk about that now. we need to take a test so so that's it I'm giving you a lot of detail here it's up to you